Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're going to be doing this night sky beach tumbler. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. All right, so the tumbler that I'm using today is a 30 ounce curvy tumbler, and I used a black and just this dark gray for my base. And as you can see, I just did the gray right in the middle and spray painted some black at the top and bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna be glittering over it anyways. As you can tell, it was raining out when I tried to do mine, but like I said, we're gonna be glittering over it. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna be using the epoxy method as my adhesive today. So I'm just gonna apply a very small amount. I'm gonna make sure that I get that nice and fully stretched around my tumbler. You wanna make sure it is fully covered so that way our glitter has something to adhere to. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the glittering portion. For the black, I'm gonna be using December Sky. It's just a holographic black. I am also going to be using Cherish, which is like a holographic silver. And I will be using Slay All Day, which is a new glitter in my shop. And again, this is like opaly, iridescent, uh, semi-translucent type look to it, silver. And then I'm also going to be using ice for like a nice, pretty, semi-translucent blue underneath everything. And of course you can find those glitters at my glitter shop, socglitters.com if you would like to. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to doing the black portions first. So I have my December sky. I'm gonna focus on the bottom of my tumbler and then I'm going to start focusing around the edge of the bottom there and letting that glitter kind of cascade slightly down my tumbler. I don't want a full cascade. So I'm not holding my tumbler up too high. I just want a very slight fade of that glitter up onto the gray. So there's a better close up of it there, not too far up onto it. But up here around the top rim, I'm gonna focus on the top rim first. And I am gonna let this cascade a little bit more than I did the bottom because this is you know, our sky area. So I wanted this just to cascade just a little bit further down. So I let it cascade almost to the middle, but not fully down to the middle. So I'll hold it up again so you guys can see how far I let it go. And now that the top and bottom are all nice and anchored down for us, we're gonna go ahead and start with the rest of the center here. So I'm gonna take a bit of my sleigh all day and I'm going to focus it straight underneath the top black that we did. And I'm just gonna start off with a straight line. And then after I go around once to get my line kind of figured out where I want it to go, that's when I'm gonna start kind of tipping my tumbler forward just ever so slightly. I don't want it cascading too far. And then I'm going to tip it back up onto itself to to really make sure that I, I do let some of these chunky, it's like a mini chunky custom mix, that I really do make sure that some of those chunkies really do fall up into the top black portion because I, I like the way that looks. It almost looks like stars in the sky. So I did let a little bit more of that cascade to the one side. Now I'm gonna come right up underneath that sleigh all day. Again, I'm gonna make a line right underneath it and then I'm going to ever so gently let that kind of cascade back and forth onto itself. And again, you don't wanna be fully concerned about really loading it up right now because what I do is I come through and I'll do all my colors and then we're gonna come through and do the reverse. So I'll show you a little bit more here in a second. So now that my, my Cherish is down, we're gonna come through with this blue again and just sprinkle make a line and then letting it cascade up and down now i do let the blue cascade further up and down than i did anything else because it's it's a semi-translucent and i'm just really making sure that i get that blend going in very well up into my silver and a little bit more down into my black now that we have everything the way we want, now we're gonna come through and do those colors in reverse. So I'm, again, I'm gonna pick up my blue, I'm gonna start with my blue and I'm gonna really load that on. Then I'll move on to my silver Cherish and do the same exact thing, letting that really cascade back and forth onto itself. Taking that sleigh all day and again, going around in that line and letting it cascade up and down, making sure everything is nice and blended. And end with the first color we started with, which was my December sky. So I'm gonna hit up that bottom one more time, hit up that rim one more time, and there we go. So now I'm just gonna set that off to the side and let that cure, and then we're ready to move on to the next step. 
Now that our epoxy is cured, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chip brush and I'm going to sweep away any extra little glitters that just didn't get adhered down when I applied them. So this is really going to help out make sure that our ombre doesn't get all smudged up with black glitter up into the silver and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Then I'm going to take it outside and give it a nice spritz of my two times ultra clear hair. I'm going to bring inside after it's dry and I give it the glove test before I get started, which is just me taking my glove, rubbing up and down on my tumbler, making sure there's no glitter on my hands before I put my epoxy on. And if there is a lot of glitter on my gloves, I will go back outside and give it another coating of spray seal and do that process all over again. So now all that you have left to do after everything's all sealed down is you wanna go ahead and give it a nice flood coating. I did about 30 to 40 milliliters of epoxy here over top. I'm gonna to place that onto my turner, hit it up really good with my torch, and then I'm gonna let that cure and then be ready to move on to the next step. All right, our tumbler is cured and we're ready to start making those waves. I have quite a bit of epoxy in my cup here. I did not need this much, but I had some other projects I was doing. So I'm gonna divvy off a little bit of this epoxy. I just need about five mLs into each one of these little containers here. That's gonna be for our wave colors. And then for our epoxy here, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying just the clear epoxy straight to our tumbler to give us a nice surface so that way our waves have something to move around on. Altogether, I would say you want to add about 20 to 30 mLs over top of this so that way you have enough surface for those waves to, to give us that nice look that we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that onto my turner and I'm going to go ahead and hit it up really good with my torch before we move on to adding our waves because we're going to be adding our waves right directly into this wet epoxy. I'm going to bring back over that epoxy that we kind of segmented off earlier and we're going to go ahead and start applying our additives into it. So the first additive I'm going to be using is just a white alcohol ink. This is just Pinata Blanca Blanco. I added about seven drops into this. I don't want it fully pigmented because the first round that I do, I kind of like to have it just be a little bit foggy, which I'll show you guys here in a second. And into the second one, I'm going to be adding this silver mixative by Tim Holtz. It's just another alcohol ink, and I'm only going to do about two to three drops of that because that is a lot more pigmented than the white is. So whatever alcohol inks you're using, you might not need seven drops of it into your white the first round, you might only need two or three, but for this particular brand, I do need to add just a little bit more to get somewhat of a, the look that I'm going for, and the alloy definitely only needed two to three. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my white first, and when I start applying it, you're gonna see what I mean by it's not very pigmented. That, that's exactly what I want because we're gonna kinda of add layers to it. We're gonna build up our beach look. So I'm just gonna start taking that white and I'm gonna start right about where the black stops at the bottom, and I'm gonna make my way up to about where that, that uh, slay all day begins. So I'm gonna do that full portion and just kind of See, just real random, just kind of placing that ink splotches around the center portion there. And then after I get my white added, we're going to come through with that silver mixture and we're going to do the same exact thing, just very randomly dab this around right in the portion that you would like your waves to be. And as you see, that stuff is a lot more pigmented. So I, I didn't want to use too much. So I'm, and I'm really trying to make sure that I kind of rake it around a little bit so it's not piled up just in one area because it could completely overtake your design if you accidentally put too much. And that looks about right to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take a heating source. You just want something that can that has a nice uh, flow to it so that way you can blow your waves up and down. I'm just gonna be using my old blow dryer. Used it for years, works great. I'm gonna put that on too high. And I'm just gonna start off in one direction. So I'm just gonna go from the bottom all the way to the top until everything starts to move around for me. And then I will flip my hair dryer around and I will start from the top, working my way back down to the bottom, doing the same exact thing, just making sure that everything starts moving around for me. And then I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit just to see how my waves are starting to form. All right, I gave it a couple minutes just to see how those waves are starting to form. And now I wanna come through and start adding my highlights. So again, I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna add some more of my white alcohol ink into it, making it a bit more pigmented as you see here. It's a lot brighter and vibrant and this is really gonna get, start giving us that depth and those highlights that we really want. And I want you guys to know that I am barely touching this tumbler with my stick. What I'll do is I'll take a little bit of my, my epoxy mixture and just enough so that way that epoxy mi mixture is touching it without my, my stick fully touching the tumbler because I don't want to mess up what we already have going on. We just want to come through and give highlights. 
Another thing that I'm doing is when I go to blob down my colors, you might see a little blob and then I'll kind of bring it over to one side to give us that longer thin piece that we want. And then I make sure that I come through and extend off the opposite side of that, that blob that we laid down. So that way each side has nice thin pieces branching off either way. So that way it, it really does make it look like those waves are breaking. Now you can highlight as much or as little as you would like because as always there is no right or wrong when it comes to making art i just really want to make sure that i come through and just and highlight as much as i can because i really like this look of the kind of foggy underneath with that more vibrant of the white over top now to kind of finish it up i'm going to completely highlight the bottom portion here so i'm going to take my stick and I'm, I'm going to load it up pretty good because i really want that to be my nice focal ending portion of the bottom here and i'm also going to do the same thing around the top of my waves as well so again i'm just going to take my stick and kind of highlight right around the top and there you go. Your, your beach look is on its way to almost being done. So all I have left to do with this is I'm going to let this cure fully and then we're ready to move on to adding our decals. So let's go ahead and jump over to my design space and I'll show you guys how I put my decals together. I had a really hard time finding a quote that I liked for this look that I'm doing today. It, you know, I wanted something that have a little bit of meaning. And when I seen this, I knew this was the one. I was kind of down to the wire when I found it. But I got this from Fallen Apple Graphics on Etsy. And I'll make sure to put her shop in the description box. And I just sized that a little over 3.5 and a little over 4. So I unlocked it to make it kind of fit my my dimensions just a little bit more and I thought that fit perfect in the center of my tumbler and for my palm trees here I got this right off creative fabrica it comes in like this wrap and I unlocked that and I made that about 11 inches in width and a little over almost I think it was a little almost six inches in height so you you want it pretty big so that way you have a nice big exaggerated look for your tumbler and for the quote, I'm just gonna cut it out in this really beautiful opal vinyl. It's like a grayish blue, goes so well with everything. And for the palm trees, I'm just gonna cut that out on a basic black vinyl. All right, our tumbler is all ready here. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and clean up my rim really good. I'm gonna give everything a really good sanding and then I'm going to come through with some rubbing alcohol and clean off any little debris off the tumbler. And then we're ready to apply those decals. So my decal is already weeded and I already put down my transfer tape over top as well. Now I'm going to come over onto my tumbler and I'm going to figure out where I want to place it. I want the way, the the word waves to, to be right where the curve starts on the tumbler. So that's where I know I need to start cutting my decals here. So I'm just going to come through and I'm going to start making some slices. I'm going to cut away some extra stuff that I don't need. And I'm just going to make a slice right above of change so that way I know that I can come through and get this decal nice and flat and straight on my tumbler. And because of where I'm placing it, I'm also going to come through and do another slice right below the phrase of change. Again, just so that way I, I know that I can get these decals on there properly. So I went ahead and I took my decal off. I have my transfer tape with all my slits in it. I have to have it on a table so that way I know I can get it lined up really nice. So I'm going to get that, that top portion lined up really good. I'm going to go ahead and put that on and then I'm going to show you guys how I like to finish applying it. So I'm just going to lay it down so you guys can see a little bit better. You see all that bottom stuff still open so that way I can kind of be in charge of making sure it's on straight. I'm going to go ahead and lay down my top portion there and make sure it's nice and burnished down. And then what I like to do after I get the top portion burnished down is I'm going to take those tabs that I made for myself and I'm just going to grab those tabs and pull it pull it straight, making sure that you kind of pull a little bit hard and then just laying it down flat. So that way I know my wording is all where it's supposed to be. And I'm just going to kind of do that with the last portion here. I'm going to get that nice and lined up and I'm just going to take my finger and rub it straight down the middle and then just kind of burnish off to each side. And there you go. Your, your decal is nicely placed on a curvy tumbler. So for my palm trees, instead of trying to do the full like pattern like it came, I'm actually going to break it up into segments so I can have a little bit more control over where I would like it to be onto the tumbler because I want some of these palm trees to almost look like they could go over it 
go over the decal, which you can do that. That'd be kind of cool. Just a little bit of the palm tree kind of overlaying over top of the decal. But I want it as close as possible without completely being over it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this grouping of these two palm trees with the birds over top. I thought that looked really cute. So I just came through and I placed that down. And I'm going to take this other little palm tree and place that somewhere as well, right? At I, I gotta push that down, hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, <laughs> now that's what I have so far. Now I'm gonna come through and place some more of my palm tree. So this one, I, I didn't want it, I wanted it underneath the wording, so it's completely fine to do that. I, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. Do, do what you think is right. So I'm just gonna take this little palm tree and put it right directly under my wording and then just kind of trim away any extra vinyl that kind of hung over. And after I get that portion done, I'm going to come through and I'm going to grab, I think I'm going to grab this portion right here with some more of the birds and the two palm trees and then this other kind of medium sized palm tree. Now I am going to lay these down together. I'm not going to piece those apart and I'm going to come off to the right side of my tumbler, making sure those birds kind of are up close by the wording and some more of those palm trees are a little bit close to the wording as well. I am gonna come through and make a little bit of a slit so that way I can get my, my one palm tree down a little bit smoother than that. So I'm just gonna come through, make my slit and get that all laid down. And the most wonderful thing about black vinyl is any little seams you have, because I do overlap one of these palm trees here in a minute, you can't see any little seams. If you need to pop a bubble, you can't even see where you, you uh, poked a hole in your vinyl to pop your bubble. I mean, black vinyl is extremely easy to work with. So I'm gonna take another one of those small palm trees and line it up again underneath, kind of flanking the other palm tree I did and putting that under the wording as well and overlapping it onto that one palm tree too. But again, like I said, you can't even see any seams once that epoxy goes over top. It's wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off that little bit of extra there. So for my last palm tree, because I used all the palm trees that came in that little set, I decided I wanted to turn it around to the back. I wanted to leave a little bit of a gap in case I wanted to add a name or something like that. So I just want to kind of overlap this one with some more of those palm trees. Just again, kind of adding, adding some layers to it. There we go. <laughs> And after I get done doing this, I'm just gonna come through and make sure everything is nicely burnished down. I'm gonna go ahead and get its last two finishing coats of epoxy on, and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.